united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. God bless you. Greetings, everybody. This is Pastor Juan Felix once again uh, from House of Purpose Church. Uh, remember, we are at 11 to 20 Rojas Drive, uh, Juan Felix, House of Purpose Church. It is good to be with you once again here in this Wednesday. I pray that everybody's been blessed. I pray that you have been well. Uh, today, we have a great, great study once again. I have the privilege to be joined today with the uh, co-pastor of House of Purpose Church, and I'll let him do the introductions. Hello, my name is Samuel Quijas from House of Purpose Church. I am the co-pastor and the youth pastor as well. It is an honor to be here with my pastor to go over this amazing topic of restoration. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited. Thank you for having me here. It's awesome. It is, it is going to be an amazing, amazing uh, um, prayer uh, um, study today. But I want you to go with me, if you would, this morning to uh, Luke chapter 15. Uh, we had spoken about uh, reconciliation and restoration, and, and I do feel that the Lord wants to continue uh, uh, speaking to us about, about restoration. Uh, and today, with the help of, of God and, and, and co-pastor uh, Quijas, uh, he's going to help us go through these topics, and I'm sure you will be blessed. So if you would go with me to Luke chapter 15, we are going to um, uh, start, let's actually start in verse 22. And it's, it says as follows. But the father told his servants, quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then bring the fatted calf and slaughter it and let's celebrate with a feast. Notice verse 24, because this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Amen. Can we pray this morning before we start? Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity of being here today. I ask you, Father, that you anoint this lips, Father, that this good seed, Father, is placed in good ground in the minds and the hearts of your people this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. We have been speaking about reconciliation, restoration. Uh, again, I, I believe that God wants to continue speaking about restoration. And, and uh, we spoke about uh, the picture of reconciliation and the picture of restoration. And we saw that in, uh, embodied, if you will, in the story of the prodigal son. Amen. So, Pastor Sam, uh, last, last Wednesday when I was here, we spoke again about the, the, uh, the prodigal son. We spoke about, about how, how he begins coming back home. And, and there is where reconciliation happens. So, so, so he comes back home. He understands and realizes um, where he is, his condition. And, and notice this. The uh, son says, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you. Mm -hmm. And so he, he realizes that. He understands that. And he wants to make his way back home. I heard something, and maybe you can help me with this, that uh, reconciliation started uh, when, when the son actually made up his mind of coming back home. Not necessarily when he had the encounter with the father. What do you think about that? Well, that is that's good. It, it it all starts when you realization hits you. Mm -hmm. Realization hits you where you at, where you came from, where you're at right now, the situation that you're at right now, and what he was. He was eating with swine. He was eating with pig when he's from royal family. Wow. You know, and his father, his brother. He he's from royal family, so to be eating with pigs and swine came to his realization. Like I'm not, you know, even my servants ate better than what I'm needing right now, you know? So it's it's time for me to go home. You know, it's time for me. You know, I, I must go. Even though I've sinned against my father in the heavens, you know, I, I no longer can bear his name. But I need to go home. You know, I need to go home. I need to go back to my father. You know? that, that, that's amazing. Uh, again, I, I like that one, in that one saying that actually reconciliation started happening or happened when he realized, you know, his condition and he mm -hmm. wanted to go back home. Exactly. But then we see... We see reconciliation when, when the father uh, embraces the son as he sees him on the way. Yes. And, and notice this. Scripture says that he is still, still yet a far way off. Mm -hmm. So he's not necessarily home. Mm -hmm. He's not necessarily in father's house. 
Eh? Uh, we, we are, you know, in, in church culture and, in, in, you know, in, in our upbringing perhaps, we are taught that, that you need to be fully in church, fully in Father's house, to be fully reconciled, to be fully restored. And yet we see that, that the Father runs after him, mm -hmm. that the Father realizes, he, he understands, God understood that, that where we were and we're coming back home. So the Father sees him, acknowledges him, and goes after him. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Very he awesome. is still not home yet. He is still not enjoying the benefits of, of, of the Father's house, mm -hmm. but yet the Father goes and reconciles with him as he sees that he's coming back home. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And we are so used to seeing and saying, he needs to be home, completely home, completely restored, completely filled with the Holy Spirit. He needs to be at church. He needs to do this and this and that. Before, So, so we Christians set the conditions mm -hmm. of reconciliation and we set the conditions of restoration. And yet, if we notice these words that are coming out of Jesus' mouth, the Father goes mm -hmm. when he realizes that his son is coming back home. And he goes and reconciles with him. Mm -hmm. And so what, what I said prior to, to today is that the father is always looking to reconcile with his children. Exactly. Isn't that amazing? That is, that is awesome. The fact that he's looking and he's waiting patiently, waiting patiently knowing that we will return. You know, it's us as Christians, us as humans, you know, we tend to put obstacles in way. Well, well, he has to do this first before we can reconciliate him. He has to be back fully in church, like you said. But the father was waiting out there, and the father was looking. And as soon as he saw him, he didn't wait for him to fully come to him. He ran to him. He ran to him and embraced him. You know, and that's something in our culture that we must, we must do. When people are coming back, we must run to them and embrace them. You know, let them know that they've been missed, that we love them. And that's what the father did to his son. Regardless of what he did, regardless of he went out, you know, um, ashamed his name. The fact that he was waiting for him, and when he saw him, he ran to him is what gets me, and it, it just shows me the love that God has for Amen. us. Amen. Look at, at verse 19 and verse 20 really quick of, of Luke 15. It says, mm -hmm. I am no longer worthy to be called your son, and make me like one of your hired yes. workers. Mm -hmm. So then verse 20 says, so he got up and went to his father. Notice he, is, he realized where he was, and he is taking the steps to get back to his father's house, right? Mm -hmm. But while his son was still... A long way off. Let's focus on that for a minute. He was still a long way off. Mm -hmm. Who saw him? His father mm -hmm. saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran through his arms around his neck and kissed him. Mm -hmm. Watch this. He has made his way back home. But he is still a long way right. off. Exactly. And so people that are being reconciled back to God, uh, you know, again, we set the expectations. And, and, and us, even in church, we set certain bars, uh, bars and certain standards mm -hmm. that, that really aren't God's standards. Nope. And, and this is something that, that's not God's, God ordained. Mm -hmm. So he was still a long way off. Which leads me to believe that the father always kept an eye open yes. for the return of the son. Yes, he did. And when he sees him come back home, he goes to him. Exactly. And so, again, church culture, you need to get back to Christ. You need mm. to come here. You need to do this. You need to do. We set the standards. We, we set the table and the conditions of reconciliation. When the reality is that the father saw him a long way off. So, so he's still not uh, the... The epitome of what we would call a Christian, mm -hmm. and yet the Father still wants to have communion with him, yep. still wants to go and embrace him, and still wants to go and reconcile with him. And I think the point of reconciliation is just this, that it is the Father that is searching after us, mm -hmm. that, that all we need to do is, is realize and understand my condition, my condition far away from home, my condition far away from the Father, and yet once I realize that, God does the rest. Yep. God runs after me, even if I am a long way off. I mean, what, what would you say about that? Well, you know, it just shows how much God loves us. It just shows how much love he has for us. The <clears> fact <throat> that we're not fully there yet, but he's ready to go to us. He's ready to pick us up off the ground and let us know that he's been waiting for us. He's been waiting for us. He's been, he's been looking out and waiting for the moment for us to realize and come to terms that we don't belong in where we are in that situation. We belong with God. And when we move ourselves in that towards direction, God takes control of everything else. Amen. 
his father saw him mm -hmm. was filled with compassion was filled with compassion you know this is this is uh, uh, something that is near and dear to my heart um, I feel that that God's people need compassion yes I feel, now more than ever now more than ever especially now more than ever mm -hmm. uh, as as the culture changes as as things begin to change mm -hmm. you know we are beginning to see things that the church never saw uh, even five years ago mm -hmm. things are popping up that that yes they go against the grain they are so if you will counter church they are so uh, a counter who we are mm -hmm. and we tend to be um, upright and, and, and get over righteous, if, yeah. if you would. And we leave compassion aside. Exactly. So this son is coming back home smelling like swine. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have his royal robes. He doesn't have, he is, he doesn't even look like one of his, one of his sons. Nope, lost everything. And yet he is filled with compassion. compassion. If we would only have the heart of the father. And sometimes us as children, as the children of the father, as, as, as children of God, we don't exemplify it. Mm -hmm. We don't have the heart of the Father. Mm -hmm. And yet the heart of the Father is compassion. Exactly. Compassion for those who are coming back home. Exactly. Even if they don't look like us. Mm -hmm. Even if they're different. And, and just as you said, even in this climate, even in this culture, that, that, that you know, we, we're, we're seeing things that, that yes, you know, we, we're not supporting. Yes, yes, they, they, uh, they irk us, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, but yet we need compassion for them. Yep, we do. And, and we need to bring them back, back to Father's house. Exactly. What do you think about that? You know, and, you know, we tend to be like the brother. You know, the brother was angry. You know, sometimes we at church, you know, there's people who come back and come back wanting that love for God, come back because they have that realization. But where the people tend to the church, I might say, the church tends to, well, no, because we've been here. You know, like we start seeing the human heart instead of God's heart. We start, we start, you know, there's terms that you need to do in order to be back fully, you right, know. Right. And with God, as long as you accept him and you realize and you cry out for him, he will manifest himself to you. And he's there for you regardless. So we need to have as a church that compassion to everybody, you know, everyone, even the ones that antagonize us, even the ones that yeah, right, uh, right, accuse right. us, even the ones that right. ridicule us. We still have to have compassion for them. Uh, how difficult is that? It's very difficult. It's very difficult. That we're being ridiculed. We're being yep. criticized, you know, and, and yet... We need to have compassion for those people exactly. that don't look like us and don't smell like us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? And, and so I, I, I want to briefly do a, 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 a quick uh, a plug in for this. We have a prayer line mm -hmm. available and it's and it's and you can call right now to our prayer line. 915-532-8518. Again, this is our prayer line for you this morning. 915-532-8518. We're speaking about restoration. If you feel that you need, Pastor, I need a call. I need, I, I need prayer for compassion. Yes. I, need, I need you to pray for me. Uh, the prayer line is open. Pray for me because I need to feel compassion for those who are coming back home. Yes. And if you're listening to this and say, uh, Pastor, I need prayer because I want to come back home. Feel free to call us this, this morning at our prayer line, 915-532-8518, and I want to pray for you. And we have people ready here willing to pray for you this morning. Yes. This is what compassion looks like, Pastor. Compassion lo looks like this. He saw him a ways off. The father runs to him, is filled with compassion. He says he runs and he threw his arms around his neck. And kissed him. Mm -hmm. This is what compassion looks like. And, and sometimes we get so righteous mm -hmm. that even those that don't look like us, as we were speaking about, that criticizes, uh, that, that, you know, that, that want nothing to do with us, mm -hmm. you know, this is what compassion looks like. If we can embrace them, if we can hug them, and if we can kiss them. Mm -hmm. You know, I truly believe that there is a generation that is lost, that wants to come back home, but is waiting for God's people to show compassion. Yeah. That is waiting for God's people to show the embrace, mm -hmm. to hug them and to kiss them. And I think this is, this is the hour for that. Mm -hmm. This is what people are waiting for. Yes. What, what do you think about that? Yes, I do. You know that they want to see the Christians following the steps of God and having that compassion. You know, and we tend, to, we tend to not show the people that are different than us. We tend to show the people that, are, you know, that have left 
and, you know, God's glory, God's church, we, shouldn't, we tend to shun them out. We tend to ignore them. We tend to, we tend to like, push them to the side. And that's not what it's all about, you know. Those people are dying for, for God. Those people are dying that they need that extra push, you know. And we need to show compassion to them for they can know that God is love, you know. God is love. The Bible tells me God is love. And they need to see the love through us pour out to them nice. so they can know that this guy is a man of God. And that's what it's about. It's not about pushing them to the side. It's not about, you know, neglecting them. It's about showing them love, regardless of the situation, regardless of who they are. We need to show compassion towards everybody. You know, God's church and God's people, we are a people of order. We are mm -hmm. a people of, of, of respect and of discipline. Uh, but we're also a church of restoration. Yes. That's right. uh, and, and I think they're not at odds with each other. Mm -hmm. Um I, I don't think respect and I don't think discipline is at odds with restoration. Mm -hmm. And so God, this is, this is um, the perfect story, mm -hmm. the perfect example that God always wants to reconcile, that the Father is always searching after reconciliation and, and not necessarily damnation, but restoration. Mm -hmm. and, and this is just amazing. Notice real quick in verse 21 what mm -hmm. the Son says after the embrace. So notice that the father has now reconciled with the son. Uh, the, the, the son made the appropriate steps. He went back home. Mm -hmm. He still wasn't home. He still wasn't there. But the father ran after him mm -hmm. a long way off. And he, and, and he initiated uh, the reconciliation. He reconciled with, with the son. And this is what the son says in verse 21. The son said to his, to his father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you i am no longer worthy to be called a son mm -hmm. i think part of the embrace is to uh confirm with people and to and to give words of affirmation because sometimes we fall so far away from god that there is an embarrassment to come back home oh yeah the guilt the shame and so th this is what the son is saying right mm -hmm. i am not worthy to be called a son mm -hmm. So, so he's not son worthy, and he's not worthy of the father, mm -hmm. right? He's lost his identity. But this is what the father's about to do. The father's about to reestablish his identity. Mm -hmm. So something came to me while I was uh, reading this, this, this passage about words of affirmation, about people don't feel like daughters. Mm -hmm. People don't feel like sons. People don't feel like Christians. Mm -hmm. And yet, this is what they are. Yes, they've gone astray, but when they're coming back home, and once we have seen them come back home, we need to call them who they are. Yeah, exactly. They're not servants. They are sons and daughters of the Father. Exactly. Right? What exactly. do you think about that? Oh, that is awesome. You know, the fact that in his head he thought, what I should say, you know, all the guilt, the shame, the embarrassment that he was going through, analyzing, thinking, you know, I, I don't deserve to be called your son, you know, I'm pretty sure he played it over and over in his head like a lot of people do when they come back to church. They, keep, they seem to be like, no, I don't, I don't deserve to be here. I don't, all the things I've done, all the things that I committed, you know, the things I've said, you know, I, I, don't, I don't deserve to be here, you know. I'm going to go and I'm going to tell him, you know what, just treat me like I'm just a regular person, you know. I don't, I, don't, I don't deserve to be doing the things that God wants me to do because of everything I've done. And the fact that the father, on 22, the father basically, when he told him, he didn't acknowledge it. He said right away, but father, he said, bring out the best robes and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Right, right, right. You know, it wasn't about, oh, okay, you know, let's talk about what you've done. No, the father didn't, didn't care about that. The son is home. His children are home. So what did he want to do? He wanted to dress them back up and make them who they are, not where, where they were. It's who they are is what he wanted to do in and regardless of the son was telling him, no, no, you know, I don't, I don't deserve to be like that. I don't deserve to, you know, to do anything. I don't even deserve to be your son. The father didn't have time for that. The father didn't pay attention. The father said, you bring the best robes. Bring his sandals on his feet. Bring him the ring to affirm that he is the son of a king. And, and that, is, that is so amazing. I, 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 I often say this. A sinner often knows that he's a sinner. Yes. I, I say this, the church has done a good job 
of calling the sinner of sinner. Mm -hmm. But the sinner doesn't necessarily need to be remembered who they are. Most people acknowledge and know that they're in the wrong. Most people. Most people do know that they're far away from God. Mm -hmm. uh, but these are words of reformation. No, you're not a servant. You are my son. And these last couple of minutes, I want to finish with this. But the father told his servants, quick, bring out the best robe, put it on him, put on him the, 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 the ring on his finger and the sandals on his feet. Notice this. The father just gave the commandment to who? His to his servants. Yes. So it wasn't the father that put on the robe on the son. It wasn't the father who put on the ring or the sandals. Mm -hmm. So he's saying this, the father told his servants. servants. What does this mean, Pastor? It means God tells us good and faithful servants. You know, we are called servants yes. of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. We are called servants of God. And so I believe that this verse 22 is speaking to the church. Yes. The Father Amen. is commanding the church for restoration. So what can we deduce from this? What can we learn from verse 22? That it is the intent, it is the passion, it is the heart of the Father to restore. But he is commanding his servants to do the restoration. And that is hard. That is hard to restore somebody who has who has done something negative towards us, mm -hmm. who has spoken it, who, who has sinned mm -hmm. towards us, who has affected us, mm -hmm. who, who has maybe caused harm to the church. Mm -hmm. And yet the father says, okay, I am giving the commandment. He's come back. I'm giving the commandment. Now you bring out the robe. Now you bring out the ring. Now you bring out the sandals. The sandals. Mm -hmm. This is amazing because the father is telling us to complete the restoration with somebody. Yes. It, it, that's, that's, that's hard to grasp sometimes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You know, knowing of, you know, like how you said, you know, he might have hurt the church, he might have hurt us individually, but the fact that the father said, come back, bring him his robe, and he told the servants, us as servants, we must clothe the people. We must put back their sandals on. We must put back their ring. Let them know who they are. But us as servant, can God command it from us to show compassion as well to them. Not just him. Well, us as the servants, we must show compassion as well right. and do God's work. And so he, he's telling his servants, put on his robes. Mm -hmm. Which means that the now, now, now it is the church, it is the servants who are going to change his identity. Yeah. Because we have an identity as, you know, when we clothe ourselves and, you know, we, the, there's, this is who we are based on, on our clothing. Mm -hmm. And so now he's telling his servants, I, I'm giving the order of restoration and the church, my people, my servants need to change his identity again. Because he doesn't feel part of home. He doesn't feel like a son. Mm -hmm. So you make him feel like he's a son again. That, yep. that's, 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 that's amazing, but that can be hard to, to swallow sometimes. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, it's very, yeah. Us as a church, because... God's accepted him, you know, but it makes us as a church, we have to accept him back and bring him back up to where he was, you know. And it could have been he insulted, you know, did things to certain people, but it's up to us as the church to restore him and make him who he was, you know, because. This is what the servants do. The servants put on the robe, mm -hmm. put on the best robe. They put on the ring on his fingers, mm -hmm. and they put the sandals on his, on his feet. Mm -hmm. So they put his new identity as a son. They put the ring of authority, which mm -hmm. means the Holy Spirit, and then they put sandals. So they show him a new way. Yeah. And it is the church, it is the servants who show him a new way. Exactly. And we'll finish with this. Then bring out the fatted calf and slaughter it, and we must celebrate. Yes. So there is a celebration to be had when somebody has restored somebody. Mm -hmm. This is a momentous occasion, and we should celebrate by the fatted calf. I, Pastor, I said this uh, last last Wednesday. It's 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 interesting how he slaughters a fatted calf, and it's not a lamb. A lamb would feed a family. Mm -hmm. A lamb would feed you know the immediate family. It it could feed up to ten to fifteen people, but a calf feeds a whole community. And so what the father is saying is this, 
We're going to celebrate to the point where everybody is going to know about the restoration. Exactly. Everybody is going to know, not only the immediate family, but the whole community is going to know that the church, that the servants have restored somebody who has come back home. Exactly. And let that be visible. Mm -hmm. Just as we make it known and visible that somebody's placed in, in discipline, that somebody's been placed, uh, uh, so on and so forth, mm -hmm. and we make that known. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But restoration has to be known as well. Yeah, exactly. The, the, with, with, with more of a celebration. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no celebration in, in, in discipline, nope. but there is celebration in restoration. Yes. What, what's your final thought on this? You know, it's, he wants everyone to know that his son was once lost. And now it's found. It says right there, I believe, in 24, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now found. It's time to celebrate with the community, to Amen. let them know that we have restored, as a church, we have restored the lost child. Amen. That, that, is, that is amazing. I want to pray for you in this last minute that we have before we leave. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I thank you for this word. I thank you for all those who are receiving this word right now, oh God. I pray for reconciliation, and I pray for restoration. And everybody that is coming in contact with this show, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to bless you before we leave in these last couple of seconds. Church, may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. House of Purpose Church, 11 to 20 Rojas Drive. God bless you. I love you. God loves you. And so do we. God bless you. God bless you.